Hey there, and welcome into another episode of the Fat Guy Podcast. I'm the Fat Guy. Most people call me Brett Mason. I'm glad you've decided to listen to uh, this episode of the podcast. Thank you so much for hanging out today. I assume you're here because you're on a weight loss journey or health journey of your own. Maybe you've uh, seen my post about losing 125 pounds. And, uh, I don't know. Maybe you're interested in a ketogenic diet. Maybe you're interested in intermittent fasting. I don't know. Maybe you're just here to hang out because you're bored. I'm glad that you are here. We're going to talk about how to lose weight, a lot of weight, and how to lose weight without being hungry, Um, which really is the secret of what I've discovered. Like, There's a lot of physiological things, biological things, you know, all this technical jargon, but it just really boils down to hunger. That's really what it boils down to. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about on the show today. Follow me on social media. Fat Guy Podcast is the username. And that works the same on all social media channels. It's at Fat Guy Podcast, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or my favorite form of communication, Snapchat. By the way, I just posted on Snapchat today. See, if you were following me on Snapchat today at uh, Fat Guy Podcast, you would have seen my favorite nut butters. Um, there's a lot of debate in the keto world about nut butters. Should you do nut butters? How much nut butters to do? I've continued to lose weight, and I make nuts and nut butters a part of my diet. I think it's good healthy fats. I think, um, to me, a spoonful of just regular, good old regular peanut butter, no sugar-added peanut butter, by the way, but good old regular peanut butter is almost like a dessert. It's it's, it's sweet, it's satisfying, it's flavorful. Uh Anyway, these nut butters that um, that I'm eating now, they're these custom blends are just phenomenal. So there's a lot of reasons to follow me on on Snapchat. I share what I eat and everything else on there. So Fat Guy Podcast. And my final program note before we get into the content is about how to consume this show. So if you're a tried and true veteran of podcasting and you use uh, Apple's podcast app or you have your own podcast app on. Uh, you know, your Android device that you love, then fine. You can find us. Uh, We're an Apple podcast. Just search for the Fat Guy podcast and you'll find us. But uh, maybe you're looking for a better way, integrated way, simpler way. Here, just download the Spreaker app. Now, Spreaker is the company that hosts my podcast, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. Not only do they host this podcast, but they host thousands and thousands of other podcasts. So the beauty of downloading the Spreaker app is you can download it, you can search for Fat Guy podcast, you can favorite me, you can follow me and get updates when I release a new episode. You have all the previous episodes listed right there for you in chronological order where you can go back and listen to them at any time you choose. And right at your fingertips, thousands and thousands of other podcasts covering you know any subject you could possibly be interested in. So I highly recommend downloading the Spreaker app, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. So I'm not a doctor. I don't have any medical training. Nothing I'm about to say is medical advice, okay? I'm not giving you medical advice. For that, you need to see your doctor. I'm simply sharing my personal experience, and if you construe it as anything more than that, that's uh, just imagination on your part, okay? I am not giving you personalized weight loss advice. Consult your doctor. So, would you agree with me with this statement? If I never got hungry, I can lose weight. So there's a lot of debate about what hunger is. There's, you know, real hunger, fake hunger, you know, thirst can be misinterpreted as hunger sometimes. Uh, Lack of a certain nutrient can be misinterpreted as hunger sometimes. So there's a lot of, you know, contemplation about what hunger actually is. But putting all that aside, let's just consider hunger as being hunger. If you were not hungry, you would not eat for the most part, Um, whether it be Food craving hungry, uh, you know, that boredom hunger, that uh, I feel lightheaded hunger, you know, whatever. If you didn't feel hungry, it would be so much easier to lose weight. So people talk to me about weight loss because I've been very public with my weight loss for several years. I started out using a product that helped a little bit, got me started. Um, then I moved on over into a, a 100% raw vegan diet for a while, and then I moved into a partially raw vegan diet and then it might basically just wound up being more of a standard whole food vegan diet where I just ate whole real foods but it was vegan and uh, had weight loss success um, 
And I've subsequently learned for the same reasons that I have weight loss success on a ketogenic diet, physiologically and biologically and all that. The difference has been the hunger. Um, you know, if we go back to when I was doing vegan, vegan, whether, whether it was when I was raw vegan or whether it when I was, I was whole food vegan or whatever, it doesn't matter. I was hungry all the time. The, the reason that that diet worked so well is because whole foods, whole vegan foods, we're talking about whole plant foods, are so scarce in calories that you literally can stuff them in your mouth all day long and you won't eat enough calories for it to matter. Um, that's why it works. And I, I've made a comment many times, uh, and you can go back and listen to old podcasts when I was vegan. I was very clear it was a hack. I'm like, this is a hack. I have figured out a way to hack my desire to eat. And so that I can eat unlimited amounts of food. I can eat all I can stuff in my body and it, and it doesn't, you know, doesn't affect me. So I would say that's the prime difference between that and a ketogenic diet. A ketogenic diet, I'm satisfied so much of the time. Rarely do I have hunger. Never have ravenous hunger. So ravenous hunger is 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 a hundred percent gone. Now that doesn't mean I don't ever desire food. It doesn't mean I don't ever feel some hunger, because I do feel hunger. Uh, some days I feel, you know, slightly stronger hunger than others. I would say overall, I'm rarely ever hungry, and if I am hungry, it's a minor, very minor hunger. Now, does that mean I don't think about food? Oh, I think about food a lot. I love uh, thinking about what I'm going to eat this afternoon. I love uh, planning to go to dinner with friends and family this weekend, and you know, they send me recipes they want to try, and we see what looks good, and you get excited about eating it. So you still are excited about food. But as far as hunger being a driving force behind me eating, it doesn't happen anymore. And that is the great secret and the great brilliance behind the ketogenic diet. So I'm not going to get off into a deep scientific discussion of why it works and why it doesn't work. I'll just cover it briefly. We'll just hit the high points. So the worst thing you can do is do what nutritionists tell you, to do what dietitians tell you, to do what these people in the fitness and weight loss industry tell you to probably do what your doctor tells you, depending on who your doctor is. You're going to get this advice to eat three quality, wholesome square meals a day and two or three healthy snacks. So essentially, you're going to be eating six times a day. You're going to be eating six meals a day. Let's face it, a snack is a meal. It's just a small meal. All right. So six times during the day, you are going to be causing insulin to elevate in your system. I'm sorry, my nose is for some reason started, decided to start running. I think it's because I have fan, this, this fan blowing on me, but we're going to plow through. I'm not stopping now. So just bear with me and accept my apologies. So six times during the day, and that's minimum. Let me add on, if you're a person that drinks Cokes, you know, and you don't consider that a meal or a snack, it's just you drinking something. Like most people... You can ask most people that they have a lot of sugar today and they'll say, no, I don't really eat that sugar. And they drink six Cokes a day. <laughs> you have a ton of sugar, okay? You're just, you just don't, for some reason, you think Coke isn't a food. You think it isn't a meal. You know, and a Coke has 120, 140, 160 calories in it or whatever. You know, it's at the very least a snack. It's borderline on being a meal. And when you consider what it does to your insulin, it's absolutely a meal. So, Let's say that on top of the six times, even if it's only six times of just eating a day, that's plenty. But let's say even even between the six times eating, you're throwing in a Coca Two a day, or a you know, or a Mountain Dew, or a Pepsi, or you know, whatever your drink is, Dr Pepper. Doesn't doesn't matter what your drink is. You could be elevating your insulin six, eight, ten times a day. It's just it's just a nonstop process. Well, hunger comes. This, this is a hunger you're probably accustomed to if you're eating a standard American diet and you have a lot of carbs in your diet. Hunger comes when you, uh, you know, your, your body gets flooded with carbs. This is especially true for soft drinks like what we were talking about. But most any snack, most any meal, most any meal in the standard American diet is a carb-heavy meal. So your body rushes out all this insulin to try to take care of the sugar that's in your bloodstream now. Because you're only supposed to have a very tiny amount of sugar in your bloodstream at any one time. I believe it's, don't quote me on this, but I believe it's around four grams or about a teaspoon. For all the blood in your body, that's your max. It's, it's a teaspoon or maybe a little less. You know, if you're having a Coke, God, what are you having? Like, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight teaspoons of sugar 
and it's liquid and it's readily absorbed right into the bloodstream. And so, you, you know, insulin is being rushed out. But that's true for whether you're eating pancakes for breakfast or cereal. Cereal's the worst. Cereal's dumb but candy. Cereal. I did a podcast about this. I actually did a video about it on my Fat Guy podcast page. You go to Fat Guy podcast on Facebook and look at the video I did about hidden sugars and where I show you that cereal is literally 80 to 90 percent sugar. <laughs> you're just eating sugar. You're eating candy. But I digress. So your body rushes out all this insulin to take care of all the sugar you've just eaten. And it rushes it out a lot because it's an emergency situation. This is not normal. It is not normal for a human body to be flooded with that much sugar. And your body reacts in an extreme way. Because it's dangerous. Your body knows it's dangerous. It has to get in there and control that sugar. And it rushes this insulin out. Now, if you're already overweight, you've been overweight for years, you got insulin resistance, which you probably do. Your body has to rush out even more insulin because you're insulin resistant. So it takes way more than what it would take a normal person. So it's even a ton more insulin. And as a overwhelming effect of dealing with that sugar, which is good because you need to deal with the sugar. But then comes hypoinsulinemia. Uh, okay. Um, hypoglycemia, I guess, maybe the other word. Look, I'm not a scientist. If I mess words up, forgive me. But basically what that means is your blood sugar then drops, and it drops below a level that's normal. And here comes hunger. <laughs> here comes your body going, oh, crap, my sugar has gotten low. you got to feed me. And that's where that ravenous hunger comes in. That's when you're craving the Krispy Kremes like there's no tomorrow. That's when you have to go grab that Coke, or you have to go grab the Dr. Pepper or the Mountain Dew or whatever. You have to go get it. You may even feel lightheaded. You may be feel physically weak. You'd be like, oh, God, I'm so hungry. Well, you're not hungry. Your body's just trying to react to this sugar issue that's, that's happened from eating a high-carb meal. And so, you know, let's say that your answer to the problem is to go to the drink machine and get you a drink, and you drink it. Well, bam, sugar's back through the roof. What happens? Body runs all this insulin out there to take care of it. It handles it. Uh, you get the hypo sugar situation where it's back down, and then your body is craving it again. It's a roller coaster ride, and it's why you're hungry all the time. And it's not just hunger, it's ravenous hunger. Because when your body feels that your blood sugar is too low, it is going to make you ravenous. Because that is a dire, uh, highly consequential health problem to have sugar that low. And your body reacts with a vengeance. That's why it's uncontrollable you. That's why you're so hungry. Compare that to a ketogenic diet where we hardly eat any carbs throughout the day. There is no blood, sp- there is no blood sugar spikes. There, if there are, they're just very minimal. And they're spread far out when you do keto in its most perfect form, uh, combined with intermittent fasting, where you're only eating during during a, you know, two, four, six, eight hour window. So it only happens at max eight hours during the day, and it only happens once or twice. And then the meals you're eating are very low carbs, with such a low amount of carbs that you don't get a huge insulin response. You don't have the sugar crash, and you don't have the overwhelming hunger. There's, there is no hunger. I still remember very well the day that I became, my body switched over to being a fat burning machine and it was amazing. So I'd been on a ketogenic diet for weeks and weeks, okay? And I was losing weight and I liked the ketogenic diet. It was it was easy food. I liked the food. Um, I was losing weight. I was feeling great. But this whole thing that I'm talking about in this podcast right now hadn't happened yet. And I remember very clearly that I woke up this one particular morning and I wasn't hungry. And it was very obvious to me I wasn't hungry. I made a mental note of it and I didn't eat anything. And lunch rolled around and I wasn't hungry. You know, it was like two or three in the afternoon. I finally got hungry. And um, I remember telling my mom at the time who was sick, she was staying with me and I was, you know, I was trying to take care of her. I remember telling my mom that I was like, wow, this is amazing. I haven't been hungry today. And that was day one of a long string of days without hunger, okay? It just kept happening. I was just never hungry. And it was the most amazing feeling in the world. I remember having a discussion with my mom and other people about this is what normal people who don't have deranged metabolisms, who don't have metabolic syndrome, they're not insulin resistant, they're not type 2, you know, they don't have these problems with processing... This must be what those people feel like all the time, and that's why they're not overweight. Well, one, they're not overweight because their body is handling what they're eating correctly. 
because they don't have the metabolic syndrome and all that. And they don't have the insulin resistance. So step one, what they're eating, their body is actually handling the way it's designed to handle it, which prevents obesity. And then number two, they're not starving. They're not having the blood sugar roller coaster ride that the rest of us have who have these problems. And that's why you hate your skinny friends. <laughs> that's why you hate your naturally thin friends who uh, don't have a problem with food. They can eat anything they want. And, um, you know, they're not guided by hunger or anything. Because their body handles the food well. And I, and I remember saying, this must be what a normal person feels like. This must be what a normal person's day feels like. They just go about their business and they're not starving all the time. And it was so incredible to me. In fact, the only other time I'd ever felt that way in my life was, you know, several years back when I, out of desperation, resorted to a quote-unquote fat loss doctor here in town. And, of course, he immediately put me on Phenermine and Bontrill and all these crazy drugs that, you know, damaged my heart. But I remember that then. I remember my second day of Phenermine. Was it Phenermine? Yeah. Um, I remember my second day and I remember like, God, I'm not, is this, this is what being normal feels like? I'm not hungry. I don't, I have no hunger. It was so mind blowing to me. And, uh, you know, eventually I, you know, I started have I won't get into all the health things you had from those pills, but God, don't take those pills. Okay. Don't take those pills. Please don't take those pills. So I started having some pretty serious episodes with my heart. So I got off of them. And so the normal me came back. But even if you don't get off of them, they start losing their effectiveness. Your body builds up a resistance to them. That's why they're always switching you. You know, they'll fit in a while, and then your body builds up a resistance, and then they'll switch you to Bond Trail, and then they'll switch you to, I forget the other ones. There's three or four of them they use. Um, so either way, it's the, the hunger's coming back, but you do get periods of relief from it. But when this a- adaptation kicked in with me, with this keto diet, and I didn't feel hungry anymore. I felt that same way, except I didn't have to take a pill, and it wasn't damaging my heart, and it and it never went away. You know, I didn't build a resistance to it, and I'm like, God, that's what a normal person feels like. And um, so I'll tell you, that's persisted right on. You know, I'm coming up on a year. That's persisted ever since it started, with the exceptions of the time I've screwed it up. You know, my mother passed away. I. Um, Went to Bluxy to try to get that out of my mind. I went on a carb binging spree, brought back all that hunger stuff again. I had to get my, I had to dig myself out of that, which I did. Lost, you know, I gained a few pounds doing that. I lost the, that weight back, and I've lost plenty more since. But I had to do a combination of, you know, really dedicated keto eating as best I could, and I started mixing in some intermittent fasting and putting long, longer and longer spaces between meals until I got everything back regulated, and I've got back to where hunger doesn't control me again, and it's just. Um, I can't tell you how amazing it is to not be controlled by hunger. So you want to lose 25, 50, 100, 150, 200 pounds without hunger? In my opinion, a ketogenic diet is the way to go. Again, that my opinion isn't worth a hill of beans. I just know what works for me. I know I've lost 125 pounds. Maybe more. I'm waiting several days. For some, I usually weigh every day, but I've had stuff going on every day and I keep forgetting to weigh. So maybe more. Maybe less at this point. I don't know because weight fluctuates. But... I've lost a ton of weight, and uh, so I, all I can tell you is about my experience and the lack of hunger. That's all I can tell you. And I can tell you in the absence of hunger, losing weight is easy because you're no longer battling with food. You get to make logical food choices. I get to logically choose you know, how, how much I eat today, how many grams of fat I eat, how many grams of protein, how many grams of carb. It's all a logical, mental, not being um, influenced by ravenous hunger decisions. It's just logical, straightforward X's and O's, A's, B's and C's, ones, twos and threes. It's just it's just logical. I choose what I'm going to eat in that way. I also choose it based on what I want. Um, but I do what I want based on the macros, based on does it fit, based on does it work. And it's just a it's a very in your head kind of thing um, that just works naturally. And it's the greatest feeling in the world. So um, for me, uh, losing weight without hunger, losing another 125 pounds without hunger. Ketogenic diet. It's been the way to go. I appreciate you listening to the podcast today. I hope something I've said has helped you. Share this with a friend. You don't even have to tell the friend you're sharing it. Just share it on your social media pages. Share it on your Twitter. Share it on your Facebook. If you have a friend that's obese and they need to lose 25, 50, you know, 75, 100, 150, 200 pounds or whatever, you, 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 know, you don't want to have that conversation with them. Uh, my story and my uh, information, my, my words may give them hope and you can be the person that turns it around for them. 
And if you are that person, I hope that what I've said has given you hope. You can do it. You do have to make changes, but the changes are not impossibly difficult. It's not something you can't do. It's absolutely something you can do. And I promise you who you are today is not who you will be six months from now if you embrace it. You won't crave the same th- foods. You won't want the same things. You won't think the same way. It'll be a revolutionary experience as it was for me. Consult your doctor, okay? Always consult your doctor. I'm not a medical professional. Subscribe to us, uh, you know, follow us, whatever, on the social media. Uh, Fat Guy Podcast. Fat Guy Podcast is username. So that's true for Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and my favorite form of communication, Snapchat. Add me on there, okay? And download that Spreaker app so you never miss an episode. S P R. E-A-K-E-R, Spreaker. It's a free app. It's available no matter what device you use. You'll never miss an episode. And I appreciate so much you listening today.